We are back in the warehouse. It is time right now for the DraftKings postgame show. Kelsey's down there. This is Mel. I am Chris. Team Baggage gets its first win of the season. 73-72 winners over Wugas. That game was all over the place. There was crazy diving, crazy defensive plays, a lot of crazy, a lot of sledging, crazy, which is trash talking from your neck of the woods. Uh, overall, your thoughts? I, that, that, I thought they were, were on the crazy pills, man. That was like there was more. Honestly, argy bargy is what I called it. Argy bargy is what it was. It was. What the hell's that? It's like uh, that. Stop that! Keep your hands to yourself. Like, you know, argy bargy. Did you dip into the crazy pills too? <laughs> That's basically yeah. It was it was fraught that game. I think because we had two brothers on on either side. Yep. But it, it, look, in the end, I think team baggage. They were so upset about about being loot dabbed that they wanted to come out and show what they could do. So there was extra motivation in there for them. But Woogers, they're so close. It's just the little things. It's experience because old guys win shit. I love that saying. That's great, particularly for the oldest guy in the warehouse. Let's head down to Kelsey Wingard, who's with our star of the game. Yes, here with Rob and Jake just happened to join us, and now he's... You're with Rob. You're with Rob. We're with Rob. All right, a bit of an anticlimactic way for you guys to win, but nonetheless, a win is a win. You win the O'Brien Bowl, and Baggage has won in the win column. How good was that to get, your off, get that off your back? Really good, really good. I feel like all of us, well, at least Jimmy and I, we talked about a lot, like just the nerves that we had yesterday. I had, I've had, i been having nerves about this thing since like Monday. Yeah. And it's not just like the ball and play, it's like playing with the bosses, you know? I'm like, so, you know, I'm glad we overcame it today. I'm glad we just like went out there and had fun. And that's, uh, yeah. I know yesterday we talked about how important it is the height of this team all being short. I guess for you, if you had to rank everybody from most handsome to least, uh, how would you do that? I mean, Father Shea takes the cake, and then I think it's just the three of us. Okay. All tied? Yeah. And speaking of Father Shea, uh, Jimmy told us that it's going to be a big part of y'all's game today to really figure out the tools you got in him. You didn't really get to see all of that yesterday. Uh, how do you feel his Game 2 performance compared to his Game 1 performance? I thought he played great. I mean, just the confidence that that guy has is, like, inc it's crazy. It's crazy how much, like, confidence he exudes. So it's, uh... You know, I mean, I'm glad that he, he got up there a lot more. It felt like getting, I mean, the first over he got out after, what, like 12, 13 runs? But, hey, you know, he's still playing in the warehouse first time ever, so. Would you like him if he wasn't on your team? Yeah, absolutely. How could you not? I like everybody here. Everybody here is great. We love Rob. Rob, congratulations. Baggage Thanks, on the board with the win. You looked good out there, my guy. Thank you. All right, time right now to head into the press room, unfortunately. We're going to dig into the losing side of things with the Woogas, who currently sit at 0-2. Look, what's been the most frustrating thing? Is it that you guys are making solid contact, but it seems like every time you're striking, the ball goes directly into the ceiling? Yeah, that's not fun. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, was, I was so down right Lose now. down to the dumps I right now. I fucking hate losing. I'm usually pretty good vibes, but that game sucked. How much shit talking goes on at the O'Brien, like, next family gathering because of that? I can't because he, he is too easy, and then it would be a real thing. So I don't say anything to him. And then he knows <laughs> that I'm not saying anything to him because if I did, it would really disturb him. And that fact alone kind of marinates in his head. Luke's a super quick cry. I, I know why. I know why you're not saying anything to me because Super if you quick. said something to me, I, you think I'd get upset. And I said, "Oh, I, I'm in your head," and I didn't say a word. He was scared of the rapture as a small child. True story. <laughs> <laughs> Sanjay, can you give us an idea of just how uh, brutal and and all the sort of trash talk and sledging that was going on there? Because I suddenly got scared. I thought I was in the nice, friendly warehouse up until this game. No, once once we get in on the field, it's all, all serious. And, uh, yeah, especially my friend Shay was talking a lot, so I had to show him his <laughs> boss. <got> him. <laughs> Speaking of shit-talking, Shay, um, what on earth was all that about today? Like, I don't know what you have for breakfast, but... It was like you were on the extra 
crazy shit talking pills. Listen, I always tell you, I'm not a shit talker. I'm an honest person. I always talk the facts. I always put um, truth in front of me, and uh, it was all truth and reality. We are better than everybody on this uh, in this warehouse, and we're here to talk, dominate. And we will. You've seen my boys taking over this tournament, and this performance that we put up was crazy. It wasn't a fluke or anything. And also, in the end, the second innings, I had to do a little bit of. You know, favor for them, make it a little bit interesting because Big Boss told me to take it easy on the brother. But yeah. in the end, we were here to win it, and that's what we did. Team baggage, honesty, and modesty. Dan, for, for you, when you're in the field, because we saw at times ball going to the wrong end, perhaps, or whatever, how hard is it to just have that game awareness when everything's going freaking Yeah, crazy? no, that was a big issue for me. And I was just saying to them, main, main adjustment I'm going to make in the field because I got to make those plays is – I wasn't like, I need to start looking at least for a second at the wicket. I was just grabbing it, kind of like, I don't want to say panic throwing, but like my brain is just rushing. I just whip that thing. And I, next thing I know, it's hitting the wall, not coming close to the wicket. I need to look at the wicket, fire, and then hopefully, I mean, especially that one that was three feet in front of me, that's unacceptable not to make that play. So definitely one of the things that's got to be cleaned up. Um, and yeah, I think uh, if you look at the progression from game one to game two, like we got, I'd say we got better. I mean, our offense was much better today. And, um, you know, it only affects seeding, so we all have a chance to come playoffs. That's true. Right. Yeah. I do think we've gotten a lot better. We're one of the few teams that none of us have ever played this game uh, with each other at all. Yep. yep. Two of us have never played the game before at all. Yep. And we're figuring it out as we go. So things will pick up. I went yep. full circle in this press conference. I'm getting more positive. <laughs> <laughs> I, got it, I, got it I got it out of my system. Yeah. He's ready. 17 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> Usually I'm in my head a lot, so uh, today I was just like, let's just not – be in your head let's just have some fun let's just uh you know talk a little bit kind of be a pest i like talking to dan rourke getting in his head a lot because you know the amount of fucks that you come out of his mouth is just funny so anytime you can just stir on more these two guys have a their nickname that i made up two seconds ago is the brainless batters and if you get them not thinking about anything at all yeah all they're gonna do is that back wall yeah i constantly and, and it's it's brainless and a little bit of pissed off yeah just a little bit of get a little mad Bobby got the, angry yeah and that's the two of them then I know then I know Ooh, I'm gonna watch this well we wouldn't have this great tournament we wouldn't have these great press conferences if it weren't for our friends and our sponsors over at DraftKings DraftKings Sportsbook is here to help you get closer to the action wondering what the DraftKings Sportsbook app offers well, check out the DraftKings parlays, same game parlays, and SGPXs. Combine multiple bets together from the same game for a shot at even a bigger payout. And if sports betting is still not available in your state, you don't got to worry, my friend. You can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have the shot to win some cash prizes. So get some skin in the game and download the DraftKings app right now. And don't forget to use our promo code warehouse. That's promo code warehouse only at DraftKings Sportsbook. The crown is yours. Here we go, Luke. Oh, they're doing silly. That silly shit doesn't work. Yeah, he's pretty good. Pretty loud for, uh, what is that, seven points earned and what, 15, 15 points allowed? What are you doing? What am I doing? I'm winning a back. fucking leading team. You're just standing I'm supporting my, back. what are you doing? You can't even knock the blat out of my hand. The blat? The blat. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah, great. Game over. <laughs> oh, it's redo. Oh. Too fast. Too fast. Too fast. <laughs> what was it? Too fast. One more time? Speedy. <laughs> <laughs> what, did that sound like a fucking like a Fox commentator? <laughs> it does. There's, some, there's like a certain vibe about it that I like. Maybe it's his first game, game of the day thing. Oh, no. oh, poor Kelsey. I feel so sorry for you. Kelsey getting her steps in, <laughs> but, no, but nothing to... <laughs> well, game five might have been one of the most exciting games we have seen in Bob and Play 2 thus far, but it is team baggage 
they get a win on the board. That's big for Jimmy. He's always looking to get that little monkey off his back, and he gets a win versus Luke, his brother, even though his dad was cheering for him. But for Team Wugas, they go down 0-2 in this tournament. Like I said, one of the more competitive games that we've seen so far this tournament. But this next one should be interesting as we turn the page to Game 6. It's the defending champs and hook line sinkers who picked up right where they left off in their first game, taking on McFlurry Power. Will McFlurry Power be able to make the adjustments that they need to make to have success in ball and play? For more on this Game 6 matchup, let's get you up to the booth to Chris Rose and Mel. We are back. It is Jersey City, New Jersey. The pregame show presented to you by DraftKings. We continue on with the ball and play league. Got Kelsey Winger down there. We got Mel Farrell right here. I am Chris Rose. Interesting game as we've got the defending champion, Hook Line Sinkers, taking on Mech Flurry Power. For people that love the warehouse games, you will remember that it was actually McFlurry Power that knocked off Hook Line Sinkers in order to raise the banner in Blitzball Battle 4. So perhaps a little payback time for Hook Line Sinkers, which not only returns as the defending champions, but also return all four players and they look that way in their round one win. They were the most composed, the most together. They had their strategies right. They just looked like they were continuing from a previous season. Uh, they're going to be very, very hard to beat today, I think. In the meantime, McFlurry Power, uh, they had never participated in ball and play, and it has looked that way, certainly <laughs> defensively. They're the only team out there that has negative defensive run save, which... I'm being told is a really, really bad thing. <laughs> they got to clean it up when they're in the field. Yeah, basically they they gave up a lot of runs and it, it, they just put themselves behind the eight ball to start off with. But let's not be too down on them because they have had a game to kind of get their shit together. Uh, sorry. God, my mum is not going to be able to watch Oh, she's going to love it. Are you she kidding me? Is. Yeah, you little potty <laughs> mouth. Clean it up. Actually, isn't that what K-Max said? He was like, I have no idea what I'm doing out well, that is a Well, that's a worry for me because we saw a shot of K-Mac earlier and, yeah. and he looked like he had a big night. So is that going to go for him or well, against him? Yeah, sometimes he plays his best hungover. <laughs> You heard it from me first. <laughs> Actually, let's hear from both teams. Kelsey? Okay, game six here at the warehouse. Team McFlurry Power joining me now. About to take on hook, line, sinkers, the defending champs for the previous ball and play. But we know you guys have hung the last two banners. Your most recent banner coming against hook, line, sinkers. You guys took the win over them in Blitzball Battle 4. So, Colin, for you, MVP of the tournament, where does your confidence go when you're facing a team that you've had success and the championship game against? Uh, we feel like we learned a lot yesterday. Um, it was a learning experience for most of us. Um, just kind of getting a feel for the new game. Um, we've had success against Hook Line before, and uh, we plan to do it again today. Hey, you guys are taking on McFlurry Power. Different sport, but Drew, going back to the last time we were here in the warehouse, Blitzball Battle 4, finals. Hook Line Sinkers versus McFlurry Power, and the villain of the warehouse came back beat you guys uh, to hang a banner. So I guess, do you feel any of that um, energy to get back at them in this game or just separate separate games? Doesn't matter. I hate them. I hate them a lot, except for Colin. And Jack, something that was interesting was we don't see McFlurry Power really struggle in the warehouse. It's a dominant team. Yesterday was the first time we really had to see them learn to make adjustments. So I guess, what were the conversations for you guys between game one and game two adjustments that need to be made? I think today was a good warm up as well, like just trying some different bats out. We, some of us were using new bats and there's like kind of a flatter edge on one. So mixing things up with that, again, trying with the ceiling, trying different techniques with the batting. So I think that's where we lacked. I think fielding and bowling were okay, yeah. but it was the batting that we just needed runs on the board. Something that's interesting we saw from McFlurry Power, we've seen them dominate in this warehouse, but they didn't quite do that in game one for them here in ball and play. I guess, what do you guys, what did you Jolly see that you think you'll be able to expose for them? Ooh, um, I think just like a little bit of like inexperience. Like whenever someone plays the game for the first time, it's a little bit like, what's going on? Why is everyone running? When do I run? Where do I throw the ball? Do I throw it there? So like, I think if they haven't fully gotten over that part yet, then that's an advantage for us. I, outside of that, like, you know, they're good athletes, but I think we got the best team here, so yeah. I'm not worried. And how's K-Mac feeling today? Uh, he's been walking around, sunglasses on all day. Looks like maybe it was a rough night. 
I don't know. He's been kind of in a weird mood. He's been kind of moody I'm, a little bit. Yeah. I'm hoping for an explosion today. Yeah. His sunglasses come off and he just yeah. bang. And I guess your overall thoughts on Drew returning the mustache uh, for ball and play. I mean, I'm glad it never left. I would have been a little devastated. I think it would have affected the team if he showed up with a clean upper lip. Like, that's not, that wouldn't be part of our game. So I'm glad it's here. Hey, look, we're doing right, right. Right. We're just showing the vibe check. How, how, uh, how embarrassed do you feel after that? Bro? Uh, the only thing that can be worse is. Bro, that was ass year. what he did. No, it was horrible. No, it really was. It was horrible what he did. But we're feeling good out here. Uh, these sunglasses. Make me feel. Sam was just yelling at me to say start the vibe check. How are the vibes, Sam? Vibes are good. I can't zoom in on here. Go back in Weird. <laughs> vibe check. Yeah, all right. Those are the vibes. I don't know how long it's supposed to be, but everybody just give me a nice round of applause because we got the vibe check for game six. Let's go. Give it up for game six. It is prediction time, Kelsey Wingert. You know, Rosie, I think I'm going to go with hook, line, sinkers. We talked so much in their game one that this is the only team returning all four players to the same team in the same tournament. We saw that experience show yesterday. We also saw some struggles from McFlurry Power. Will McFlurry Power be able to make the adjustments for their skill sets to play here in ball and play? It's too much of a wild card, so it'll be hook, line, sinkers for me. Well, look, I just want to give the wild card a chance because I, I, Head says hook, line, sinker. Mm -hmm. Stomach says maybe McFlurry can, can improve enough. I'm back in my boy Jack Meacher. Okay, good. Uh, my stomach says when's lunch <laughs> and then when's dinner. Yeah. I play a couple meals ahead, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, all right, I'm not very good at the prediction game. I, I mean, I suck at broadcasting. I'm really crappy at the prediction game. <laughs> But I'm going to go with hook, line, sinkers. I think I'm going to get one right. Oh, wow. You sunk them now. No chance. Yay. McFlurry is Yay. on. Go Rose. <laughs> go Rose. <laughs> See if I got one right. Make sure you tune in. Thanks for checking out the DraftKings pregame show, Ball in Play. We'll see you then.